Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to an episode, or if this is your first time watching, welcome um, uh, to another episode of the 99 Names. I am here tagging along with Ammar Shukri. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu and yours truly, Bilal Khan. In this episode, we are going over Al Hafiz. Al Hafiz. Like H A F E E T H or Ha Fa Ya Wa. So is Al Hafiz different from Al Hafil? Yes. Is that another name of Allah? The name is Al Hafiz. Okay. But is there a name or attribute of Allah that's Al Hafil? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Although it could be, again, controversial. Because Disagreed. The, the, the different formats, the different formats are usually you'll have one that's uh, stronger than the other. Okay. And then the other one will be something that some might hold, but it's still, uh, it might be a, a weaker form. So or I'm gonna weaker put, in its attribution. Okay. So I'm going to put that as a question mark versus al hafil Mm-hmm. So it comes from the word hifz. Okay. Which and hifz means to preserve. Honey. What do you mean? It's a natural preservative. <laughs> that wasn't being funny. Because when I went to Hawaii, we went to this one farm. The guy would grow mac nuts, as they call them. They're really, they're macadamia nuts. And so they would dehydrate them instead of roasting them to maintain its nutritional value. And then to ship it out, he would ship it out by putting them in the locally grown honey. Preservative in Arabic is actually called hafidla. In the feminine form? Why is it in the feminine form? Who cares, man? Why does it matter? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> so hafila is a preservative. Mm-hmm. So honey is a hafila. Well, actually makes sense, you know? Hey, honey. I got, I'm going to share that with the missus later. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> Bilal and his, uh, his technical romance lines. <laughs> no, technically you are a hafila because honey is a preservative. Okay. <laughs> You get an eye roll for that. But nonetheless, so al-hafil, it's an exaggerated form of al-hafil, and it means the preserver. And hilf is preserving something. Hilf is preserving something from loss or uh, forgetfulness. Okay. And so al-hafil, we call hilf memorizing, obviously, is considered, is called hilf because you're preserving it. Preserving it from what? You're preserving it from forgetfulness. You know, it just kind of... Um because sometimes we do work. It's uh, this just really brings me back to Mike Uslan. He is the executive producer of pretty much everything that's been Batman um, after the TV series. Because he was a kid when the TV series came out, he obtained the rights to Batman. He produced the nineteen eighty what four eighty five movie, uh, then Batman everything even up until today, even Lego Batman. Now he was talking about how he grew up in New Jersey. Uh, and his dad was a mason and they would build houses and they would put the bricks on the houses to make the bricks and stuff. And the thing was that he was comparing the work of his father to the work that he's done. And he's talking about how celluloid, which is, you know, the old school method of shooting movies, which is film. It lasts maybe a hundred years, mm. right? But even by the time it gets to being a hundred years old, it's already starting to wear, and that's why you put them in these climate controlled, uh, you know, type of cool places. But even then, it's not going to last that long, and that's why there's a movement going around to uh, scan a lot of the digital, uh, a lot of the um, negatives and the films into digital form. But even the digital stuff, it's not. It's like it's it's intangible. Right. The question is, how long would it last if, if something crashes, data crashes, there's some sort of blackout, whatever is the data uh, preserved? Mm-hmm. And he was t- re- reflecting on that. He's like, you know what? My stuff, as cool it as is and working on Batman, and all this stuff, probably in 100 years, nobody's going to know about it. Mm. Right. But he's like the work of my dad, him building these houses like these houses, you know, they stay for a while. Very and interesting. You, and, and you could see all around like the neighborhoods that he's helped build and things like that. And what that does is it reminds me of a statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib who said that the worth of someone is in what they excel at. Mm. The worth of someone is in what they excel at. So, for example, you have someone who is a world champion uh, yo-yo, what do they call them, athlete? I guess so. Okay, so you have a guy who's a world champion yo-yo, yo-yo athlete. He's the greatest yo-yo guy in the world. Mm. Hashtag nobody cares. 
right? <laughs> because at the end of the day, he's mastered something, but he's mastered something insignificant. Okay. And so the worth of a person. So if you're going to master something, master something that's significant because your value is going to be in accordance to that. And so even in our culture right now, you are really encouraged to master some form of art or some sort of athletics because you will make a lot of money off of that and you'll get fame off of that. But at the same time, go, to go back to your Batman guy, 20 years down the line, you talk to your kids about you know that band or that athlete who you literally captured your imagination and you got you know society worshipped and they rolled their eyes they could care less you know and so i've heard this argument uh before and i found it to be true that uh the most famous people in the world are the scholars of islam yeah i think it was the words of wisam from ilm summit 2008 that if somebody can find that video (laughs) he said the same thing he said something like hey look if you want to live for uh, a short time or do you want to live for a short time or do you want to live forever? Yeah. Right? Like, and, and then he mentioned something like how, you know, movie stars and actors, whatever. It's, it's like, who remembers even the kings of the past throughout England? Yeah. Right? You might hear a Queen Isabella and Ferdinand because of, you know, their reconquest of Spain. But even that is an But how many times a day do you have people mentioning their name? Right? right. Exactly. But then you have like, he goes, Bukhari will live forever. Yeah. And Every single day, people are saying Bukhari, and not only that, but they're saying Bukhari, Rahimahullah. Yeah. Right? So, so he's just getting awesome. every single day Muslim, Imam Malik, Abu Hanifa. These people are just getting, they've lived for so long uh, because of what they attach themselves to and what they excelled at. The value of every person is in it's, what they excel at. Oh man, it's just, it, it just brings, it's going, my mind is just going sci fi right now. Because the whole idea of a book is that you have stored your intellectual essence into a medium outside of you. And now, as long as that media exists, you will exist intellectually. Mm. And it's like they're talking about how they're, how can you record and can you map your ent- entire cognitive essence right now into a machine, an AI, so that way uh, they're talking about how potentially capturing your essence, but I'm realizing, how is that different from book? Just a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah, because what you're doing is you are giving yourself and that's why writing is so difficult and that's why speaking is so difficult because when you do so you are you know you're giving you're letting yourself. people yeah you're letting people access your heart yeah and that's very challenging to do so to go back to the name at hafiz allah yeah. preserves what does allah preserve there's different levels of protection and preservation there's the first level which is the general preservation and that is the preservation that Allah gives all of humanity, right? The instincts that he's put into our hearts. We all know what is good for us and what isn't. We know... The uh, survival instinct? Yes, the okay. survival preservation instinct. Preservation of life? The preservation of life. Isn't that a principle of Sharia? The preservation of life is a principle of Sharia. Similar, uh, but we're not talking about that right now. We're okay. talking about just the instinct that a person has in themselves okay. to preserve themselves. Uh That's the first level of preservation. And then there's, that's general for all of mankind. And then we have another type, which is uh, a specific preservation that Allah gives to his believing slaves. And that is preserving their religion as well. Okay. Right. And not only that, but there's another another level of physical preservation that they receive Allah's uh, support and aid and all of these types of things. Um, And one of the most striking examples of that is uh, with regards to preserving a person's religion is uh, that Allah Azza wa in their moments of self-doubt, in their moments of crises, in their moments of difficulty, in the moments in which many people will slip, Allah will make them steadfast because of their sincerity from before. So in the story of Ka'b ibn Malik, he had procrastinated and he didn't go out onto the campaign of Tabuk, even Mm -hmm. though the Prophet had made it individually obligatory on every single person. So sabr is related to al-hafil. Sabr and yes, Allah preserves some people by giving them sabr. Okay. Of course. Uh now with Ka'ab's story is that he had not gone out, he had procrastinated. He was a sincere Muslim. In fact he had participated in every campaign with the Prophet right. up until that point. Even Badr. Except for Badr. Because oh. Badr was voluntary. 
So there was no problem with anybody who didn't so attend Badr. It's not like because people who attended the Battle of Badr, they had kind of had like a blanket immunity of everything, right? Yes. But Badr was more like, hey, we're going to go uh, raid a caravan who's free right now. Yeah. And so everybody... And then plans changed because they missed the... Uh, well, Allah positioned and 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 maneuvered everyone around for yeah. Badr to happen. Yeah. But they were going to raid a caravan. Yeah. And so some people... Piracy. They were pirates. Some, some people didn't even go. Yeah. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu commanded everyone to go to a Tabuk, yeah. they... Uh, Kaab just kept delaying and procrastinating. He, you know, it was it was the harvest time. He's a farmer. Yeah. He's just enjoying it. When the Prophet ﷺ was going to come on the way back because Tabuk didn't end up having a battle. Yeah. They just surrendered, right? They, no, there was just no, there was nobody there. Oh, it's like, oh, you show up for a football game, but the other team doesn't show up or for the Or you show match. up for a fight after school and the kid doesn't show up. Okay. okay. Right? And so they... Yeah, that happened with my football team during a uh, post-hurricane. Uh, I, I forgot which hurricane it was, but... <laughs> uh, we. That uh, the next day, this I think it was Sunday, we were supposed to have a football game. The other team decided to show up to the field, and they automatically got the win. We got a forfeit. No, oh. <laughs> so, we were we were two and like nine that wow. season. So then uh, the Prophet Sallam comes back, and eighty of the Munafiqeen in Medina they all lie to the Prophet Sallam. They all lie, 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 lie. And Ka'ab ibn Ma'ak says, "I talked to my family, and my family is like, listen, just make an excuse. Mm. The Prophet will make du'a for you. You'll be all right." Yeah, yeah. And Kaab says, you know, that's what I was thinking about. That's what I was planning. And then all of a sudden, those ideas vanished from my mind. He just went, he just owned up to it. But he says the ideas just vanished from my mind. So mm-hmm. the question then becomes, who made those ideas vanish from your mind? In that okay. moment where everybody's telling you to go left. Especially since sudden, shaitan would be so like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And he says, every all of a sudden, he's like, I just realized that only the truth would save me. That's Allah protecting mm. a person. Protecting their religion and preserving their religion. And that's al hafil. So what's the takeaway action of this? There's a very powerful hadith of Ibn Abbas reported by Tirmidhi. Very famous hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu uses the words ihfaz. Okay. Preserve. And he says, Ihfadillah yahfadak. Ihfadillah tajidhu tujahak. He says, preserve the commandments of Allah. Allah will preserve you. Preserve. Or rather he says, preserve Allah. Allah will preserve you. How do you preserve Allah? That's where the scholars put in between parentheses and they said what he means here is preserve the commandments of Allah. Okay. Preserve Allah's religion in your life. Preserve the commandments of Allah in your day and Allah will preserve you. Preserve the commandments of Allah. You will find Allah with you. You will find Allah in front of you. And so how do I access the name al Hafiz. I access the name al Hafiz by making sure that I preserve Allah so that in my times of difficulty and need, I find Allah with me. When you talk about preserving the commandments of Allah, are we talk about basically the five pillars and the do's and don'ts? I, for, well, what does that mean? We talk about everything. Okay. Whether it's the commands of Allah with regards to faith. Okay. I preserve what Allah commands of me with regards to faith because a lot of. Oh, this is why. A lot of the contention. is a hafiz of the Quran or hafiz because they're preserving the Quran. Not just preserving the Quran, but preserving the belief. Okay. Right? Because a lot of the contention and the challenges will come to is, that are facing Islam now are theological. They're not even just, you know, oh, okay. it's not just a matter of... It comes down to the creed and things it, like yeah, that. Yeah, it comes down to... The ha- core and essence it, of it. Preserving the religion. Okay. Preserving the um, the beliefs of the religion as it was intended to be uh, preserved. And so okay. I preserve that. I preserve the Quran. I preserve the uh, authority of the Sunnah. I preserve all of these things. I preserve the belief with regards to the companions. I preserve all of these things. And yes, I preserve... The pillars. I preserve the do's and don'ts. I preserve um, the lifestyle that Allah has uh, designed for me to live. And if I do that, I will find Allah Azzawajal with me. Okay. So that's the action item? Yes. And it's a great action item. And it's a huge But for somebody item. like, like, okay, so let's say somebody who's new to the game, right? Um, what would be specifically um, good for them? To preserve the commandments of Allah. So pray, start praying. Absolutely. Start, okay. You pray five times a day and you do what you can. And that's the reason why it's hard for me to just say one particular thing this is what you need to do. Yeah. Because everyone's at a different stage. And yeah. so they need to do as best as they can. Ooh, with I got, what they I got can one. Do. I got one. You guys are watching the series, right? 99 names. Come to know the names and protect the names. Mm-hmm. Boom. Great. One of the names you can start with is preserving the name of Al Hafiz. There you go. 
There you go. So that's it. We end here.